Small Finkley, Black Tree TV. How you doing, Mark? How are you, sir? Good to see you. Uh, last time we talked, we got to talk about the Super Bowl, and my prediction was right. The Rams won. So, uh, <laughs> glad. You glad know what? Was I was I wasn't mad, but I said, man, Joe Boy, they had him. Yeah. Vengo, yeah. they had him. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, Aaron Donald. You know, Aaron Donald reminds me of Father Stu. That nothing was going to stop him on that day. <laughs> nothing. I mean, he was. I. I, I you know, I mean, I know they, they had Von Miller and lots of other folks, but man, Aaron Donald was, he was that, possessed. That's a good comparison, Father Stu to Aaron Donald. I love that. I, I got to ask you, though, like, because, you know, from the outside looking, in, especially the, the consumer fans, I know, like, we've had, like, a working relationship as journalists and, and, and talent, but it, it would seem like you've always had everything. And Father Stu, you know, he, he loses something and he loses everything and, and has to build back up. Is it any time in your life where you felt like you lost it all, like even figuratively or, you know, did you did you ever get to that low point where you feel like? like Absolutely. I, I felt like I lost my way. I never I, I felt like I never really was on the right track. I was always kind of looking for approval, trying to fit in where I could hang out with the older guys. It wasn't until I focused on my faith and I realized that I should be looking to in for inspiration from the people who have dedicated their lives to serving God, serving the community, being there in the boys club, uh, as the as opposed to the people who seem to also have it all. Um, and so once I started focusing on my faith, just good little things started to happen for me. And I was like, whoa, that it, it was pretty clear why these things started to happen. So that's why I attribute all my success, both personally and professionally, um, to my faith. And that being said, it was like, okay, so why has God put me in this position? It's not to forget about where I came from. There's a bigger plan. There's a bigger purpose. And when this movie came to me, it was like, okay, this is, to, again, to do God's work and for his greater good. And now it set me on a path and really lit a fire under me. We're like, okay, this is, this is touching people. Everybody's relating to it in their own personal way. I got to do more, you know? And it reminds me of that first experience I had, you know, when kind of committing to my faith and, uh, and really kind of surrendering to that. So uh, it's, it's powerful. It's real. And I want people, I want people to experience that and feel that, you know, I know a lot of people do, but I don't know. So a lot of people don't. And especially now with it, with people being so judgmental and, 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 you know, just like being willing to turn their back on somebody, people need to know that people are loved and supported and accepted for whoever they are and seeing the greater good in people is so important. And so this is a big reminder of that. And, and we're going to continue to promote that message. And there's so much, there's so much emphasis on negativity, man. If, if if we continue on this path, they, 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 we'll never come together. You know something, Father? There's a sign on the wall in my gym back home. Hope is not a tactic. I took that one to heart. Fought for everything I earned. This ain't no different. I think I know what God's doing here. <laughs> Seeing how I respond, I don't get my way. But I ain't giving up. Not on him or me. I want you to reconsider your rejection. You are a pugilist with a criminal record. Well, look at St. Matthew, St. Augustine, St. Francis. I mean, some of the most remarkable figures in the history of the church are reformed men. Yes, but I think what the church needs now more than ever is to elevate the standard for a priest. Well, what the church needs is somebody who's gonna fight for God. That's me. You, you have great co-stars in this with Jackie and Teresa and Mel. And I know you've worked with everybody, Leo, Matt, uh, Christian Bell, uh, Denzel. So I, I was surprised to see this quote in the shade room, like I would never work with Denzel Washington again because he's a expletive. Why did you Why did you say that? Who? You said that the shade room says that you would never work with Denzel Washington again. April Fools! April Fools! <laughs> today? April Fools joke. I was just giving the April Fools. I was joke. gonna say <laughs> the greatest actor in the world, the guy who's giving me the greatest advice about being a man of God, about being a husband, about being a father. The yeah. guy who, if I got a real problem and real stress, I could go knock on his door. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, this is the first April Fools joke. Usually my kids do this shit to me. Ah, uh, all right. That's okay. I'm gonna get somebody back. Don't worry. What, how, one of my co-stars from another know? film is staying in this hotel. He doesn't leave until one o'clock. I'm gonna get him. I, I gotta ask you 
what's the trump what's the what's the good and the bad of being the youngest of nine children like like growing up like that like how how do you feel like that part molded you being like oh well as a kid it was like it was the worst you know and like you think okay you're spoiled and it was just hand-me-downs and and also just everything just went downhill but then i was i was so competitive with everybody. And I always felt like I had to work twice as hard as everybody. And I feel like that now has given me an advantage because I'm willing to work twice as hard or three times as hard as everybody else. I just always had to. I always had to like earn my spot, fight for my spot. And, uh, you know, so yeah, now looking back at it, it was, uh, it was definitely a blessing. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being uh, uh, a good pal hey, in this Jamal, wait a second. Jamal. Why did you teed that shit up so long? It was like, it was so random about all the different co-stars and everything <laughs> else. And why? <laughs> I'm just trying to throw you off. <laughs> uh, yeah, touche. Appreciate hey, the time, brother. But guess what? I don't forget that shit. I'm coming out. Well, I guess I'm going to get you back. <laughs> I'll be looking out for it. God Thanks, Mark. You.